Purple Daily is daily Vikings entertainment. Do you just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die? I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Oh, man. Less than a week until the National Football League draft, the third annual Purple Daily draft party at the Fillmore and streaming live on YouTube, the Purple Daily YouTube channel, 7 p.m. Central Time. I had a dream about the draft party last night, boys. What happened? It was like vague, and I don't remember all the details, but I just, I remember like, I remember Judd going to the smoking hot take station like 15 times. Wow. Who'd they take? What'd they I did, do? Didn't get that far in my dream. Hmm. Yeah, I did really? not get that far in my dream. I, yeah. I, I wouldn't call these nightmares, but I have like recurring dreams where like maybe I, I can't move forwards, but I can only move backwards or I can't get to the place on time. Oh, yeah. So like hmm. if, if I were to have a dream about like the night at the Fillmore, it'd be like me being stuck yep. and I can't get into the door and I can only get there by going. It's I, I, I'm, a, I'm a weird guy. Weird guy. Very, no, 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 no. Very common. Very common. Okay. I I, st- I still have a, a dream that I'm supposed to cover a game. I forget to go. I remember after like the first period, but then in my haste to go, I don't go. Oh, it's, to the X. Oh, it's the old it. school. Judd Hockey Show. Being being late for a test or not or yeah. skipping a test. It's that exact same dream. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch of crap. It's a bunch. <laughs> I feel like crap. we need like a dream psychologist to come on the show here. Us. I used to throw up teeth in my dream. And that was what? a sign oh, yeah. of, um, that's a yep. sign of, mu- it's two things. It's a sign yep. of your wealth and or your self-image. But once I got brand new teeth, stopped throwing up my teeth. Yep. So you were like concerned about how your old teeth looked and you yeah. were dreaming about it. And now yep. that you have great teeth, yep, you don't dream about it anymore. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. Just like I have been concerned about the Vikings quarterback situation for a long time. So I dream about, have nightmares about the Vikings quarterback situation, but pretty soon... <laughs> Once they nail that pick at 11 or 5 or 4, then we can uh, we can have peace of mind. So this is a Feedback Friday here on Purple Daily where we turn the show over to you guys. We take as many of your questions and comments, your hot takes, your, uh, your theories about things, and we get to as many as we can in the next hour or so. Shout out to our friends at Quick Trip, though, Judd. Let's start the show the right way here. Quick Trip, the presenting sponsor of Purple Daily. They absolutely are, and we appreciate that. And Quick Trip is the presenting sponsor of this show because they want us to tell you that, look, they have everything you could possibly need. Like, like let's say that you're driving home tonight and you need some gas, and you're going to stop at a Quick Trip. But then you're like, I need dinner too. Am I going to have to go to the grocery store? No, the answer is no. You know why? Because Quick Trip has what you need Uh, Their chicken selections, they basically are a grocery store, too. So, like, if you need a snack, that's great. If you need food for the weekend, Quick Trip has you covered. That's right. Quick Trip, they've got everything that you could possibly need. They're like a football team, but they come with a quarterback, a running back. All the skill positions are covered, and so is the offensive line. That is your Quick Trip. Also, a shout-out to our friends. If you're a business owner out there, Do you have a game plan in place to stay focused on safety and preventing claims against your company? Let the team at Federated Mutual Insurance Company help support your business. Federated offers a customizable lineup of industry-specific coverages and risk management services to help you continue your winning streak as a business owner. At Federated, it's our business to protect yours. You can find out more at federatedinsurance.com. Okay, question number one here. Actually, there's a couple couple in the same theme to start with here. We'll start with Paul Peterson. He says, as I was looking at ways to compare draft classes, I pulled the pre-draft grade for all quarterbacks drafted since 2014 from NFL.com. So they have like a they have like a number. It's like a point system, kind of zero to ten, and they give each prospect a ranking. And so over the last 10 years, here are the three highest graded quarterbacks coming out of college. Number one, Trevor Lawrence. Number three, Joe Burrow. Number two, Sam Darnold. Mm. For reference, so so Trevor Lawrence was a 7.4, Darnold a 7.1. I don't know how they come up with this number, but 7.4, 7.1. Joe Burrow, 7.07. For reference, Caleb Williams is a 6.74. 
J.J. McCarthy is a 6.4. Paul says, maybe we already drafted the best quarterback and it didn't even cost us a pick. Now, obviously, Sam Sam has been in the league now for a half a decade and uh, it hasn't gone very well. But the fact that Sam Darnold had a higher NFL.com prospect grade than any of the quarterbacks in this year's draft, do you find that interesting? Well, and he's 26. And, and he went from dumpster fire Jets to dumpster fire Panthers to being a backup in, in San Francisco, which is the polar opposite of a dumpster fire. So do I see potential here? Absolutely. I mean, and, and it's great because you have nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. There is a There clearly, I think, is going to be a plan here. But if Darnold pl- plays great, we've talked about this. There's the potential to keep him. There's the potential that that if he's going to get paid, if you draft a quarterback, you move, move on. Uh, but yeah, I would not dismiss Darnold completely because I do think part of the Vikings thinking is the year in San Francisco and just being, you know, basically just watching, right? But it's Kyle Shanahan. It's a team that's really, really good. It's a great infrastructure. Um, I think that there is something to be said that this is a very interesting signing, despite the fact all of our initial reaction is probably to roll our eyes and say, oh, great. But this goes to the heart of the matter of what we've been discussing for weeks now, which is you go to a dumpster fire and you're expected to put out that fire. That is a huge ask for a young man. So. I like it. I mean, look what he did, Kevin O'Connell. L- look what Kevin O'Connell did with Josh Dobbs on a trade deadline within five days. I know the Vikings season, you know, obviously eventually goes off the rails per- post Kirk Cousins injury, but he had some great games and there with Josh Dobbs. Nick Mullins ends up throwing for 380 yards in, in spot starts. Like if he has a full off season to prepare with Sam Darnold and what he can do here. Yeah. I think Sam Darnold can hold the fort down. I'm not expecting uh a diamond in the rough to be necessarily unlocked here, but do I think Sam Darnold can orchestrate and run the offense for a little bit? Yeah, I, I think he can. So there's an, there's another Sam Darnold question here that I'll, I'll get to in a second, but like we've referenced the dumpster fire start to his career, like the sit, the situation being a dumpster fire with the Jets, but I don't think we've ever gone deep on that and elaborated on it. So I was curious. I went back and looked at Sam Darnold's first two years in the NFL. I think calling it a dumpster fire is generous. It is one of the worst situations a high-end rookie quarterback has ever been drafted into. It is wild how bad of a situation Sam Darnold was stuck with his first two years in the NFL. So his rookie year, his head coach was Todd Bowles, who I get has had some success now with the Buccaneers. But at the time, Todd Bowles was completely in over his head. He was a defensive-minded head coach. So he's not like, is Todd Bowles going to sit there and develop Sam Darnold to the best possible, you know, point? His offensive coordinator as a rookie was a guy named Jeremy Bates, yeah, who was fired after the season at age 41. So he was like a young, yeah. supposedly up and coming offensive mind. Offensive coordinator of the New York Jets. It'll be Jeremy Bates with Sam Darnold. He's been out of football completely since 2019 or whatever, 2018, the year he got fired after the rookie season of Sam Darnold. Okay. Deep breath. Okay. So we're going to clear out the entire coaching staff. Let's bring in some new coaches. So Sam Darnold's second year in the NFL head coach, Adam Gase. I think we all know how that went. Adam Gase has been out of the NFL since getting fired from that job completely out of the NFL for like three or four years. And he's not, it's not because of age. He's not 70 years old, right? He's like in his forties. No, he was rather nuts. <laughs> That's why. Well, and, and he rode the coattails of Peyton Manning in Denver, right? He happened to be the offensive coordinator yes. for one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Yes. The offensive coordinator for Darnold in New York in his second year was a guy named, is it Dole Logans? Naga, Naga. Can't say I'm, can't say I'm familiar with his work. Not going to work here anymore. So uh, he was quickly ushered out of that job after a year or two and then became the tight ends coach at Arkansas. He's been out of the NFL ever since. Tim Brewster-like. Yes. It's one of the most rickety coaching structures that you'll ever see for a high-end top three draft pick. And I haven't even mentioned the weapons. So Sam Darnold's rookie season with the Jets. Here were his main targets. 
Robbie Chosen, Quincy Inunua, and Chris Herndon, who the Vikings once traded like a fourth round pick for, and he did nothing. Chris Herndon was the second most targeted receiver on that team, Sam Darnold's rookie year. And he was a tight end, right? Yes, Herndon was a tight end. <laughs> yeah. He was a tree stump. So, I mean, and I get it. Like, at the end of the day, everyone's situation is going to be different. But you can't tell me that that complete garbage situation didn't factor into. And here, here's the NFL.com scouting report coming out of college for Sam Darnold. At the end of the day, Darnold has NFL size, arm strength, accuracy, pocket mobility, poise, and field reading capability. While his mental toughness and talent uh, could get him to start tomorrow in the NFL, early sideline seasoning could help him better process coverages and eliminate future interceptions. Well, they waited like two weeks and threw him into the fire. His floor is solid starter but he has the ceiling to be one of the top tier quarterbacks in the NFL as he gains more experience. He never had a chance out of the gate. I'm not saying he's going to live up to the top end of that scouting report, well, but right. you can't ignore those first two years being a major reason why he is perceived the way that he is right now. And when's the last time that the Jets did something right? That That's my question. They, they, they've screwed the pooch at every turn for a good decade now. Like yeah. everything that they, they do. Um, the question now, I, I think it's very simple. Did the year off, which is with a good franchise, help him? And two, is, is he damaged goods or ruined? Like, that's my thing about, like, that's my yeah. concern is when you do this to, to a guy, you can't just say, well, if we get him in the right place now. I mean, he spent, what, four seasons, three with the Jets, one, one or two with the Panthers in, like, some of the most toxic environments, you know, Bryce yeah. Young. The other thing is, if you go back, way back machine, to the 80s and 90s, and I am not making comparisons with Darnold, but it's just a matter of uh, some precedent that's been set. You know what? Rich Gannon. Like, you go back and look at some of his years, they're really, really shaky. But you know what? He got chances, and he developed, and he matured. Darnold's 26. The, the poster child for what I'm talking about, dumpster fire to franchise that had its head on so straight it was great, is Steve Young. Steve yeah, Young, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yep, yeah, Steve Young played for the LA Express in the USFL in the 80s. And I think at that time was the highest paid player in football, including the National Football League. Then he went to Tampa, complete train wreck. Team was terrible. He was terrible. Off the charts bad. Goes to San Francisco, sits behind Montana learns, still had ability, wasn't ruined, mm -hmm. and goes on to a Hall of Fame type career. Mm -hmm. But we yeah. don't do that now. We're just so anxious to deem you a success or bust that I feel like we pull plugs now and it's like, well, that's it, as opposed to can we have a reset, which can at least give a guy like Darnold a decent career, if nothing else. So here's one more question on Darnold, and there's a bunch of other stuff we'll get to here too, obviously. Corey Larson says, hear me out, guys. What if Sam Darnold was truly mismanaged by a garbage organization, which he has been? Maybe Kyle Shanahan worked with him and realized, hey, there might be something here. And he called up his buddy KOC and told him to give Sam a chance since the 49ers already have their quarterback. This would make sense why they seemed ready to commit to Darnold as the day one starter so quickly. So here's the potential dilemma. What if the Vikings trade up to draft a quarterback... J.J. McCarthy, whoever, they sit in behind Sam Darnold. And Sam Darnold has a top 10 quarterback season in 2024. Would we actually let him leave in free agency? I mean, yeah. we're getting, we're putting the cart way well, ahead of the yeah, horse I here, think, obviously, but. <laughs> I think the answer is yes. I, I mean, I, I do not think, just to be really, really clear, I do not by any means think that the Vikings signed Darnold with the anticipation that he was going to be the guy. Right, I, but what? But but in this scenario, what if by the end of the year, he is legitimately like what people thought he was supposed so to say, be five years ago? So let's say, let's say best case that, that he becomes what Baker Mayfield was in Tampa Bay last year, which was a playoff quarterback. I, I mean, he did. Um, if your guy is ready, if you go top five pick, like if you get Drake May and he is prepared to play, I think Darnold walks. Yeah. And the problem is you'd have to then pay Darnold something equivalent to Baker Mayfield or Correct. higher. 
And even though it might not be a $55 million contract, it's a chunk of money. Yep. You're probably better off with the rookie scale. Maybe you could get a comp pick. Um, I don't know. Could you franchise him and trade him? Trans you could do something tag. like that. Is there a transition tag you can put on him there, there or something? But the no. franchise tag for a quarterback is pretty high, so now you're fooling around. No. I, I mean, there's there's options here, but I, I do think that the Vikings have a succession plan. Like, I think in, in their ideal world, they get a top five or, or one of the top four, right? Darnold has a good year, which would be awesome, because I because I don't think that they're going to object to the kid sitting behind Darnold if he's playing well. Yeah. Uh, but I do think that the succession plan for 2025 does not include just trying to to run it back with Darnold if they have McCarthy, May, or Daniels. Yeah. Okay, this next one, and again, we have encouraged you guys, the great, faithful, Purple Daily audience, if you have a cousin's, wife's, friend's, oh, acquaintance that has yeah. information on what the Vikings might be up to, send it to us. Score North app. There's a feedback tab. And you can send it anonymously like this person did. Reckless speculation. Hey, guys. I'd like to keep this anonymous because I have a nugget I've been holding on to since last offseason. You're holding on to this. For no. 12 months? Come on, and I now. think now is the time to share it with you. <laughs> I have an immediate family member who was at a non-football-related event a year ago where Kevin O'Connell was also in attendance. Without giving too many details, I can tell you that a year ago, he already had his sights set on Drake May, whom he brought up by name in conversation with said family member. When I heard what he said, I was shocked he would be so candid. He also acknowledged to my family member that he didn't think Kirk was the guy to bring the team to a Super Bowl. Speaking of shots at Cousins, he would probably sign a one-day contract and retire as a Viking if he was the highest paid one-day contract yeah. in NFL history, fully guaranteed. He'd want money. Yes, that's a great point. Love the show. Pump for the draft party, uh, which I'll be watching on YouTube. It's a little bit of anonymous speculation. Reckless speculation. Are you going to get to the one? I think it was. It might have been le last week, so... But the guy that claimed that, that he was about to pump gas at a gas station in KOC and a quick trip. It was a quick trip. He claimed that KOC got out be, behind him and was on his cell phone and was talking really loud about the Vikings draft plans. We will get to that one. Yes. We are, <laughs> I love that one. We are setting up for that one. Okay. I'm, on I'm sorry. I thought we might have just missed that 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 one entirely. No, we do we do not miss anonymous tips on feedback. And then there Friday. was the one last night about the guy that saw McCowan on the plane going home to North Carolina, but unfortunately he just has a house there. I but that was so. weird because I thought that email came from someone from Minnesota, but but Doogie and others are reporting that Josh McCowan was in Baton Rouge, not for dinner, by the way. Right. Yeah, so, Doogie, Doogie's oh, yeah. reporting it. They did not have dinner with Jamie. And then we got Daniel. a picture, right? I, I saw a picture on Twitter. Oh. Of McCowan on the plane. With a from, Bat from Baton Rouge? Well, no, I think it was. So here's what I bet they did. I bet they flew a private plane. Well, they flew plane private back to, to Minneapolis. Rouge and then came back because everyone else was coming back. And then Joshy Boy got on the plane and, and went home. But I'm sure he's got a house still there. His family might still or, be in North Carolina. But that doesn't mean he's not Or is, is he mean. going to meet with Drake May? Oh, yeah. Hey, Drake. Reckless. Drake, we just met with Jane Daniels. <sighs> he ain't what, all that. You're what our if guy. Drake's? What if Drake May is in Josh's guest room? He's staying there, training to be a Viking. He is training to be a Viking. Training to be a Viking. He's got the Ragnar <laughs> stuff on. Uh, okay, since you brought it up, this one says, keep anonymous. I had a friend who was driving through the cities and just so happened to pass TCO Performance Center in Egan. He was taking his dog to the dog park, but decided to stop near the practice facility so the dog could get a good scent. He then proceeded to show his dog pictures of the 2024 quarterback class, and the dog chose Michael Penix Jr. Coincidence? Dogs have good senses, and they might be able to pick up on what's going on at TCO Performance Center. The dog sniffed it out. Who's a good boy? Oh, there's the Vinster. Hey, Vinster, who who are they going to draft? Pick, buddy. Who are we gonna Making an on-camera appearance. 
Blink twice if it's going to be Drake May. Yep, you just did. It's Drake May. Uh, no. Yawn if you think it's going to be Bonex. Oh, okay. Lick Declan's face if it's going to be Penix. <laughs> Lick your own butt if you think they're going to trade for Justin yep. Herbert. That's just a common occurrence. That would that would mean nothing. With I was all. talking to Declan. <laughs> okay, Jamie Rask chimes in here. <laughs> And says, I'm so sick of Thor Nystrom acting like J.J. <laughs> McCarthy is the best quarterback in this draft. Thor can't even defend himself here, so we'll have to maybe defend him. I seriously think Thor is getting a kickback from McCarthy for hyping him up so much. I can't wait till McCarthy ends up being a backup at best in the NFL. Then wait and see how Thor spins his hyping of McCarthy. Laugh my ass off. <laughs> The thing is, McCarthy happened to be on a team that was better than everyone else. Throwing the ball 10 to 15 times on a team that ran the ball 90% of the time is way easier than coming to an NFL team that throws 30 to 40 times a game and runs as an afterthought. That's what McCarthy will get coming to the Vikings. Ooh, well, first of all, I'm going to defend our guy because if Thor, first of all, if Thor is going to actually or is getting a kickback, he's a complete genius because he changed the market on McCarthy in February. I mean, completely changed it. But, um, okay, if the Vikings aren't going to run more, it's an afterthought, I think you got a problem. That's my first thing. They need to be able to run the ball more. So, like, I, it's... You're, well, it's my, like Aaron Jones is the yeah, best running back they've had since exactly. Dalvin. You know. So you're not mm -hmm. going to install the system and say, hey, JJ, we don't really run the ball here. That's not how this league works. But the second thing is, can we all agree... That McCarthy has a lot of unknowns, but that doesn't mean he's bad at those things. Like I, I feel like I feel like we want to take the college tape and say, well, this is who he is. And the experts, rightfully so, are saying, yeah, we got some concerns, but we don't know. So if if Kevin O'Connell says, you know what, he doesn't make a ton of throws, but I have seen enough to know he can make the throws. Well, that's doesn't the that thing. carry weight? A couple things on this. It is very true that he didn't have the – forget about the counting numbers. I mean, like, the sample size of throws needed. Just because you th see him throwing an NFL Sunday throw a couple times in a game against Alabama, he's not being asked to make Sunday throws at the volume that some of these other guys are being asked. So I, I do think small – you know, th that's where I disagree a little bit with Thor, and I, he, that guy knows a hundred times more than I ever will about how to grade out draft prospects, but – Sample size does matter that when you ask a guy to double and triple his volume of making NFL throws, you're completely projecting with J.J. McCarthy because you haven't seen enough. But I heard a great line on that Brett Coleman, J.T. O'Sullivan podcast. Uh, it was a bootleg football episode. If you're really looking for like injecting draft evaluation into your veins, I highly recommend the hour and a half that Brett Coleman and JT O'Sullivan did together. And Brett Coleman said of JJ McCarthy, the absence of evidence does not mean that the evidence is absent. Ooh. Correct. He's right. So what's what's likely is in the because I think the Vikings worked JJ McCarthy out for like two days in Ann Arbor. They got a bunch of time behind the scenes. So what they're probably doing in those workouts is saying, okay. Everything we've seen on tape in a small sample size looks very Sunday NFL-ish. But we need to see if you can make some very specific throws that we have in our playbook. And we're going to make you throw the ball like 200 times today. So they're, like, they're getting that private one-on-one -on -one time, and they're determining if he can make certain throws that they need him to make. Now, is, that's also a small sample size. It's one day in Ann Arbor in the offseason in shorts and a T-shirt. Uh, but again, like this is where if Kevin O'Connell says, I've seen enough on tape and in private workouts that J.J. McCarthy is the guy, I trust Kevin O'Connell in that instance. And Thor, but I trust Kevin O'Connell more. Well, and and a huge part, too, is, is the private sit-downs with McCarthy to get his state of mind, to get, like, you can learn a yeah. lot there. Like, I, I just think that we try and go off of one thing, which is game film, and... I'm not saying that can't be important, but it is. Uh, it but if there are silos of why would you draft a quarterback top five? It's one silo. It ain't two and a half. It ain't three. So and and I do think that the throws that he did make in 
limited time do tell you something because those are those at least are a resume tape of okay when the pressure was on he could do this he could do this his throws to the boundary weren't great and then the question becomes this what can we fix yeah what what can we fix what are we sure that we can fix and what can't we fix because if you come away with this guy's a great college player but unfortunately there are some things i mean there are mechanical things that take a long time Aaron Rodgers did not need to sit as long as he sat behind Favre, but he probably probably was in need of a couple of years yeah. because his mechanics were so screwed up. Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow was a problem because those mechanics in in a league that moves fast weren't going to work. You needed a couple of years to coach those out. Like this is this is so much more of this is a investment of a house that need that is always going to need work. And but but you, the square footage is there, the yeah. acreage is there, but the water. The, there's a there's in, a ocean front, right? Yeah. But right, but I mean, if you if you put if you mount the TV, throw on a couch, and sit down, that thing's gonna fall apart eventually on you. Yeah. Got to fix it up. Yep. Okay. Before we get to a boatload more here on Feedback Friday, the three of us had a chance yesterday, a little top secret content project, Purple Daily, shake hands with Red Cow. We were at the Red Cow in Uptown location yesterday uh doing a couple fun episodes that are going to be released in may and june after the draft is over but red cow is one of our favorite spots collectively on this show six locations five in the twin cities and one in rochester and man we had a chance to sink our teeth into some amazing burgers some of those cheese curds you see on the youtube channel chips and dip don't sleep on the chips and dip don't sleep on them i sure didn't nope uh, in, in I fact, took home you, the wings. Phil oh, left. you did, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Phil, I had to get back to go record Flagrant House. Yep. You guys, you guys, and you know what I did? Up. Chips and dip. Uh, I, I, I took home one thing. Declan took home the wings. Oh boy! And I hit the, the chips and, and dip. Not to mention the outstanding beers that we were. Eating. Yeah, thirty-six Enjoyed. beers on tap. Local brews, craft cocktails, and belly up to the bar at any of these Red Cows to watch sports. Tons of TVs for sports viewing at these Red Cows. So check them out. Also, it's lake season here. Pretty quickly, it's going to be 70 degrees plus on a regular basis. Aquaside is here to help clean up your murky lake areas. That's right. When it's uh, when it's cabin season, which is coming up here in the Midwest, uh, you're going to get that dock in, and then you're going to take a step in there, and you're going to realize, oh, there's been something Ugh. growing here over, over the winter. What the heck is this? And Ugh. our friends at Aquaside... Help you diagnose what's going on in there so they can help you diagnose what's in it. They can give you the Aquaside pellets, which are safe products registered with the EPA and the DNR. So these aren't just some random chemicals you're throwing into a lake. Uh, they're safe products. Shipping is free, too. You can go to Aquaside.com to learn more. That's Aquaside.com to learn more. And with the nice weather approaching, that means riding season. And our friends at Dennis Kirk are back in the mix here on Score North Podcast for the riding months. Go to DennisKirk.com to check out over 185,000 parts, apparel, and accessories for motorcycles. Talking to you, Ragnar. All you Ragnars out there. Go to DennisKirk.com. ATVs, UTVs, dirt bikes, even snowmobiles if you want to get ahead for next winter season. Same-day shipping on all orders placed before 8 p.m. Central and free shipping on orders over $89. DennisKirk.com. DennisKirk.com. Okay, back to the feedback bin here. Um, Jordan Pelletier. Pelletier? Pelletier. Pelletier. Topic for Feedback Friday. One reason Justin Jefferson may be waiting to sign his contract is because of the Netflix wide receiver documentary coming out. Hmm. After I assume people will love him even more, giving his side more leverage to ask for the farm, does it make sense for him to just wait until... I mean, Kirk Cousins' value went up after people saw him. Great father, right? Great family man. Just wanted to bring this up for discussion with Justin Jefferson. Is he waiting until that documentary drops for more leverage? I don't think he needs to. Like, Kirk... The documentary helped Kirk because we really didn't know Kirk and and there were assumptions made about kirk's personality that were at least in in that because of of how well he did in acting like kirk he cleaned himself up justin jefferson already extremely popular and and i'll go back to this 
Kirk Cousins was, you know, let's say he was the 10th through 13th best QB. Mm -hmm. And his popularity grew because of the documentary. But that didn't really change his place. You know, he still he still stayed around the same place. Justin Jefferson is a top three, and he might be one receiver. I think this comes down to the finances. I think I don't think this has anything to, to do with outside influences being necessary now. But that doesn't mean that this won't take until camp. So it might appear that that way. I don't think the documentary in Jefferson's case is, uh, has anything to do with it. Yeah, I mean, J I feel like JJ is just more universally like loved and admired. And I'm not saying Kirk wasn't, but there was definitely more questions. I mean, the first line from Kirk Cousins, right, in that documentary was, if my doubters, something about walking on water, right? It, there, there was that quote he had about, that was the first words oh, out of his mouth in the documentary. Yeah. So, I yeah. I hated that, by the way. Like, <laughs> we've already litigated that a million times, but he's been, him and, and all the Crusaders basically say, he could... He could walk on water and you'd still, he could go win a Super Bowl and you'd still, n no, <laughs> that's not true. We're criticizing uh, him because he comes nowhere near doing those things that he was <laughs> advertised to do. The quote was, if my critics saw me walking on water, they would say it's because I can't swim. <laughs> okay. No, that's not, uh, that's not true, Kirky boy. So, yeah, I think it's genius, actually. I think, I think Jordan is correct. I'd wait till after the documentary comes out. People love me. They're going to love me even more when they see how great I am in this Netflix documentary. Another $5 million a year. will be like, sure, we'll give you more money. <laughs> You're a good actor. Okay, we have, it's pretty rare that we get a handwritten letter oh. here. Usually oh Feedback Friday is reserved for the email inbox. Yeah. This is a handwritten letter that was sent to the, uh, the 1500ESPN slash Scornar Studios. And it's from our friend, J.J. Veracek who has made a bunch of different cool Vikings-themed patches for us over the years. In fact, here's uh, some of them. He made some of these bud patches. We've got some... He, he sent some Randy Moss mooning patches, too, that AJ, producer AJ, is getting put on some hats. So we're going to... Oh, nice. So, JJ, we're going to put those on. Way to go. But he says, Phil, hello. Hello. You know it's draft time, which means patch time from me. Hope you guys like these bud patches and the Moss mooning patches. They're awesome. Please show them on your show. I'm trying to get on Write That Down or on uh, Ventline, but Dex didn't answer my email. So please answer JJ's, JJ's email. email. You got it. Or I think it's uh, he has, it's Anthony is how he signs his emails I here. For me, so. I feel like I've reached out to that. The, the name sounds so familiar, and I know it's probably the stuff you sent, but I feel like I've reached out him before Declan gets a lot of emails so if you need to send two or three yeah. to get on write that down Put ice you, can, Declan. you can pester Declan yeah I, I got a, I got a whole system and product that process that really works well for me and I understand that it might uh, annoy some other people and so the process is what's the process delete, uh, delete, the process delete. for just well, deleting for write, everyone's email no no, no. for the, the process for write that down <laughs> is I don't like to book out like more than six weeks out in advance because then if I, then if I continue to book out book out book out book out like yeah. people forget People yep. aren't able to commit to that. So I like to give a, a good window to commit to those times. So I, I don't book things out more than like six weeks in advance. Yeah, uh, makes sense. With, with Ventline, um, I typically reach out the week of, and I usually pick two people. And whoever gets back to me first, if that person says they can or can't, I move on to the next person in queue. And it just goes on goes on from there. That's, we should uh, start booking out through like 2026. Like, okay, we yeah. got you scheduled. So it's yeah. going to be uh, January 17th of yeah, 2026. I mean, yeah. there's a lot that can go wrong. <laughs> a lot that can go wrong. We could set up like an official calendar, like an outlook just for Purple Daily fan shows, I guess. But Sounds no. like Dex has a system, man. It's a good system. I have a system. I like the system, yeah. It's a, it's a quarterback system, manager system. Michael Hayes system. chimes in, so says, love the show and all the Score North content. My dad and I have both been daily listeners going back to the 1500 ESPN days when you guys had your four-hour radio show. You rock. Anyway, by the way, we have something relating to that later in Feedback Friday here that Dex dug up. Anyway, a recent debate in our brother's group chat about whether the Vikings would have been better off just re-signing Cousins led me to do a deep dive on the history of Super Bowl winning quarterbacks over the last 40 years. Here's what I found out. Over the last 40 years, only two times has a quarterback taken more than six years with their team to win a Super Bowl. That was the length of Cousins' Vikings career. 
Peyton Manning in his ninth year with the Colts, and then John Elway in his 15th year with the Broncos. He already gone to three Super Bowls in the first six seasons and then later cashed in with two wins. Over the last 40 years, only five teams have brought in a veteran starter, the Cousins plan, and won the Super Bowl with that quarterback. Two of those five had already previously won Super Bowls, Manning with the Broncos and then Brady with the Buccaneers. Uh, None of them took more than four years to win that Super Bowl with their new team as the mercenary. So by the looks of it, you get six seasons for a draft pick or a young quarterback to lead you to the promised land. And if a veteran addition doesn't get it done by his fourth year, it's time to move on. Good research. Mm -hmm. Very fair. Very fair. Because if if you draft a quarterback now, the Vikings take a quarterback. And let's just say it's Drake May. And let's say he doesn't play. So 2024, he does not play. 2024. 25 he plays and then you probably go into a a super bowl opportunity window for the next three years right Mm -hmm. so that seems incredibly fair yeah that's good some fair complaints in the youtube comments here from goat nuts cool back to kirk talk mackie never lets me down goat nuts i'm look did i not back out did i not say well i guess i did take a shot he did i I feel first first of all this is from it's from a listener who had some research, and oh, it's not as I much you, about Kirk. I thought Gotok was talking about the previous one about the documentary. No, he's this, talking about this. Oh, this one's fine. No, 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 no. This is good research. It's not even about Kirk. It's about, like, a quarterback plan. Yeah, no, this is perfect. Yeah. Good research. Okay, Patriot Amiot, Amio. Did you guys see the mock draft by Sam Munson at Pro Football Focus? where he has the Vikings taking Drake May in the first round. And I don't know. I haven't seen this exact mock. Yep. So I don't know. So he has must have May falling or something. But then he has the Vikings taking Michael Penix in the second round. Yep. We talked about this on Purple Daily on draft on Monday, four four or five days ago. Um, Pretty crazy mock there. So does he have May falling and the Vikings don't give up the 23? And Uh, then they trade back from 23 and take Penix in the second round? I believe, if, if I'm remembering this right, I, I think it's they get up to eight with the Falcons and get a second round pick back or something. I think that's how that oh, okay. how that went down. But yeah, they they go they go two quarterbacks with their with their first two picks, which would be pretty bizarre. Some people have have asked this: Is there any sort of thought about maybe it's not May and Penix, but you do have the first two. You got two first round picks. Is there any? Would you ever draft two quarterbacks? Yeah, the, Washington did the RG three Kirk Cousins right. thing. Would you Not, go like Drake May, Spencer Rattler in the later rounds? In the later rounds, yes, but um, I certainly would not do like back to back, yeah, like first round or first and second round. And I wouldn't take Penix and Drake May because then does Pe- Penix become like a gimmick guy at first? Or but yes, I I would. I think what Washington did was. In retrospect, smart. So yes, if you could get Spencer Rattler in a, in a later round, I don't I don't think he'll go. He'll actually be around that long. But he's like a third yes. round pick, right? But but like if he fell to the fifth round, and then I take it a quarterback in the first round. Yeah, I feel like not? Sam Darnold kind of acts as your other quarterback though, because he's twenty six. I know he's only on a one year contract, but but well, yeah. I wonder what Sam's reasoning was. Like that's. Uh, it's really weird. Well, but I think I haven't read this, but my guess is he's saying, why don't you just give yourself a great chance at a young quarterback yeah. panning out by taking two quarterbacks? He basically said Kwesi being the stock market guy and hedging his bets and making sure you get the best possible returns. That would be the reasoning of taking two quarterbacks that you'd be maybe you hedging, but you'd still be likely coming out ahead because one of the two would work out. Do you have but a, you would need them starting... to both play. You know, Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I was going to say. How do you... How do you have them compete and get them reps? Because if Rattler, like if you took Rattler in like the fifth round, he just wouldn't get the reps. Mm-hmm. I mean, Kirk didn't get the reps. Sports Dad, you might have to take this one. And this, uh, there's there's a handful of people that are asking about this. I saw in the inbox too. What happens to Jaron Hall from the uh, from BAS Dry Dock here in the YouTube comment section? In the current um, in the current climate now, if they draft a quarterback. And obviously have Darnold. Jaron Hall is mothballed. Yeah, he goes into mothballs. He's a you know fifth how round you got pick, that man. upstairs. He's a fifth round pick. You got that closet, and you like a jacket. 
but you don't, and you don't want to get rid of it, but you don't wear it, you put it in mothballs. Jaron Hall's about to be mothballed. What is what? What are mothballs? Yeah, by the way, I, they keep I've things. Heard that. Um, yeah, yeah, they keep things. Um, I think they're they keep like if I'm gonna Google it. If something's you're, in you're storage, struggling to explain it. Even if like, something's hey. in storage, they keep things like moths away from it. Hence, mothballs. They keep <laughs> things away from it. They keep it fresh. They keep it so it's like still it's vacuum sealed. Like what? What do you like? Is is it in a case? Well, Phil's looking it up right now. I'm telling okay. you what my interpretation of being mothballed <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, that, that's... Keeping it fresh. Keeping okay, it so it says so it what you should know about mothballs. Protecting your children. Oh, so you mothballs are classified as a pesticide and used to control yep. moths, silverfish, See? and you. other fiber pests in wool and other natural fiber and clothing and materials. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to look. Or up. you could just like wash your clothes and Put, clean your house. Well, I think this is, I think it's an old school thing. I don't think you, you do it now. I think this is from a, a bygone era of. Um, <laughs> hold on a second, dictionary.com. Sure, yeah, no, put, we'll get, we'll put get. in mothballs. Uh, defer indefinitely or for a very long time, as in we put the plans for a new library in mothballs. The expression <laughs> alludes to storing woolen clothing or other items with marble-sized balls. Um, to prevent them yeah. from being damaged by moths. 1940s. Marble-sized balls, huh? Marble-sized balls, which is what I, Sam Cassell had. No, he had, he had grapefruit-sized yeah, balls. Well, I, well, anyway, they dragged him down. He got hurt because the balls were too big. Anyways, uh, Ken Olson chiming in here via the feedback tab on the app. Peter Schrager, he's referring to the Peter Schrager mock the other day. Peter Schrager is either being lied to or resignations need to happen. <laughs> if the Vikings take a cornerback at 11, not quarterback, but cornerback, he has the Vikings going cornerback. Yes. I think it was the Alabama cornerback, and then they took Bo Nix at 23. Yes. Heads need to roll if this happens. The Vikings are in desperate need of defensive tackle and quarterback. He thinks Peter Schrager is either lying or people need to be fired if this happens and we did have people dig up schrager's uh mock 2023 and the vikings it was way off as far as what the Vikings. it's tough did. To, it's tough Which, as a mocker well, though man. he's it's... trying to talk to and, and what he's trying to do is really really tough he's trying to talk to people and get an idea of what the team will do yeah but you're probably your your influences are probably agents and other teams because no team's going to tell you what their plan is Peter. right Guess what? Hey, here's what we're gonna do. Don't go on NFL Network and say anything. Yeah. Don't go on Twitter. You know. So his job is because he's not doing a mock that reflects his own thoughts. It's a tough assignment. Yeah. So I wouldn't be too concerned that it's going to be right. Okay, we got a, we got a few more here. A couple. There's a trip down memory lane coming up here. But uh, let's shout out our friends at Nicolay Law here. Our guy, Russell Nicolay, and his team are proud to serve the Twin Cities and help people that get in unexpected accidents when the insurance companies come for you. Nicolay Law will go the whole nine yards. Make sure you get the compensation you deserve after an accident. So get Minnesota's local award-winning injury lawyers. They are the exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily here. NicolayLaw.com or give them a call at 1 855 Nicolay. That's NicolayLaw.com or 1 855 Nicolay. And Dex, the folks at Meadows at Mystic are ready with open arms to welcome your tea time. That's right. It's where champions play or guys like me shooting 115 <laughs> having a blast. So you're out? No, I'm not. No. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best part about my fiance was just telling me Declan can go shoot a 115 and come back home and say he had the time of his life and I do that at numerous courses but I love it at the Meadows at Mystic Lake you can book your tee time at golfthemeadows.com to learn more it's golfthemeadows.com it's a great course scenic course one of the best around the GPS infused carts so I can really know how I can just duff uh duff a drive or just absolutely shank one oh that was only 50 yards in the woods good job Dex you can do that at golfthemeadows.com to learn more your game should potentially, Declan, be put in mothballs. No. <laughs> We're it getting comments. Not. By the way, we are getting comment after comment on that, and I, I would like to say thank you. 
because you know what? There are some old people that remember putting things in mothballs, like me. Now yeah, the, com- the comments are ablaze with mothball discussion right now. That's a great phrase. Put it in mothballs. On, on the golfing front, Nate G has this comment here. Declan said he stops at Quick Trip before golfing to get power aids, but I wasn't aware of any golf courses that allow outside food or beverages. That's breaking the rules, just like the Falcons tampering. Well, typically what I do is I grab a Powerade and I slam because I got like a 25 minute drive to the golf course. I, I slam it there. And yes, I always support my local golf courses. I always pick one up, pick an alcoholic beverage up before my round. I usually sometimes if I know we're going in a hurry, I'll take the six pack and go out there, put it in the back of the golf cart. All right. I, I support my local yeah. golf carts and my cart and the, any cart gal that shows up to I support all the food and beverage that comes with the golf course. No, Why no, don't no. we ever get the cart guy, you know? Yeah, I don't Bob. Know. Oh, there's the Frank. There's is. Frank again rolling yeah. up here. Yeah. You guys want to buy around? Jessie Pierce is, is a cart girl, yeah. and she says it's still like the old school. Oh, too. yeah. The hey there, calls, pretty lady. Oh, yeah. The, the guys, you know, I'm away from the wife, so I can make the the comment. See if I still got my fastball. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm taking no, we'll just take uh, a couple beers. Friday off in a couple weeks to play where Jesse at loggers where Jesse works and I'm very curious to see the th- other 10 men that I will be golfing with I wonder how well that will go I don't Tell know if he's working themselves. that day oh but I'm gosh. very I'll report back Tell if, them to uh, behave Jesse themselves. Pierce is there yeah is it okay is it really I feel like every round of golf uh, hundreds of rounds of golf I've always brought like an outside water bottle or something and Water's just stuck fine. it in my bag Water's always fine So you can't oh, oh so you're not supposed to bring like a 12 pack or something Yeah that's frowned okay. upon Yes okay. that is very much frowned upon A Powerade frowned upon I, I mean it's a Powerade it's just like a water It's yeah. the I think it's the beers that they're more concerned yeah. about or like yeah. the bottle of and, Kharkov that you know, you, know you sneak out right that, in the bag uh, I, I, have a, I have buddies that work at golf courses, and the, the easiest telltale sign is like when the car girl shows up and you just ask for a cup with ice. And it's like, dude. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's you, classless. You, you just you, you ask I'm for I'm just really hot. I... And just pour it out or, or, or yeah. slam some of it and then pour it. You know, there, yeah. there's, come on, order that's of operations. Classless. Let's go. Oh, man. Okay, uh, Dex, you were, let's do this right now. You were digging yep. through your inbox the other yep. day looking for like something totally different and you mm-hmm. stumbled into some prep emails. I have them right here on my phone. I believe, okay, this is beautiful and you have them up on the screen. So what's the date on this? This was an old, we used to do the Mackie and Judd radio show on 1500 ESPN. We literally did a four hour radio show with like 16 segments every day. What is this on the screen here? So this is, uh, I believe August of 2016. So this is, the, this is the first show that you ever produced for us. I, I think it was, or within the first <laughs> week or so, because uh, I filled in for, for a while while you guys were down in Mankato. I mm-hmm. think Harrigan was there too, obviously. So you need someone back at the mothership, the board, to run things. And I'm sure it was a little clunky in the <laughs> offense for a couple days, but we got through it. Um, so this is what we called what a hot sheet, correct? This was a hot sheet yep. between? Yes, the hot sheet. Yeah. Which topics. is I'm shaking right now. As Judd, yeah, Judd is having PTSD. This is terrible. Uh, so these were all the topics that were planned for each start of the segments. Uh, so you have Richard Patino at 9:30, Brandon Fusco, Tate. Chipper was going to join. So you. I remember the brand that Brandon Fusco that interview. Crazy. I remember he told a story. Yeah, Judd and I sat down with him at Vikings training camp. He told a story about tearing his pectoral muscle. And he said it was like getting the worst titty twister you've yep. ever had in your That's life, right. and somebody yeah. won't let go. Great guest. It was a great interview. Yeah. And if memory serves right, if we had Drew McGarry on, I think it must have been why your team sucks article was, at yeah. the time. Why Destin. the Vikings suck 2016 edition. Yeah, it was. I, I, it was definitely around that time. So a loaded show, a, just a packed loaded show in August of 2016. What bar was that, Phil? Oh, man. JB's, Not Bradley's. Uh, no. Uh, G, yeah, the Johnny B's. Johnny B's. No, right? No, no, no. It, it was the other it one. It was the breakfast place slash bar. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's B, open I anymore. Thought. Nice location. Mm-hmm. Can't remember. Nice location. Yeah, because they they brought Thielen over from the walkthrough. I remember that because he he came into the restaurant. Yeah, I remember that show well. But that the four hour thing just absolutely and five observations in basically what amounted to a 
14 minute segment. How can sports dad possibly give you <laughs> or Phil give you five observations? And that, that's why the podcast is the greatest thing on the face of the year. What's funny is I'm because you sent over some of our actual prep emails. And this is when the Vikings announced their partnership with Twin Cities Orthopedics for naming yeah. rights to the new practice facility in Egan. And I said this. I'm just reading my own email here from eight years ago. I love the congratulating that goes on and all these big NFL unveils. Roger Goodell comes to town, puts on the hard hat, puts on his silk robe, and uh, encourages everyone to keep building palaces like this all across the land. The new facility, by the way, will include, but will not be limited to, new administrative offices, outdoor stadium with anticipated capacity of 6,000. They delivered on all this stuff, by the way. Five outdoor practice fields, four grass, one synthetic, Outdoor training areas, including a sand pit and incline surfaces. Indoor practice facility with a 100-yard synth- uh, synthetic turf. Media center. They'd lived up to all of the stuff they said. It's they a college there. campus. Yeah. Yeah. It's I crazy. mean, that thing, that, that place. And I, if I'm not mistaken, it opened with the Super Bowl here, right? Uh, Like, it timed up pretty close to that. Because I remember doing a tour... This was like a week before I think I got laid off at Go, but I remember doing a tour of TCO, like a media one, like it was a whole media tour, and it was yep. like probably 75% done because it was most like most of the buildings were in, were in, and then there was like other minor construction going on. So yeah, I think around 2017, 2018, when the Super Bowl was here, that is basically what's completed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Timmy Two Shoes. Uh, Timmy Two Shoes says. To what extent would a player sabotage their own draft stock with teams they don't wish to play for? So there's all this. There's a couple reports that like all of these quarterbacks would love to play for the Vikings. Maybe they want to avoid the Patriots, the commanders. We all know how certain players will drop for various reasons. A bong gas mask, a failed drug test, etc. Is it possible a player might intentionally damage their reputation to get into the right situation? Say the Vikings. It's a good conspiracy theory. I don't know about that, but I mean, there's definitely, I, I think there's internal feedback, right? I, I got a note from a, a guy saying, forget about your point about El- Elway and Eli that, you know, that's not going to happen unless it's the first pick, but I don't necessarily agree with that. Like, I think you could make it very clear that if you think the commanders are a joke, or if you think that the Patriots are just a, you know, just a hellhole, which they might be for a young QB. I think you're going to tell them that, right? Yeah. Especially if you note that they're talking to a team like the Vikings, that's not going to mean that the price for the Vikings isn't still, you know, big. That's the thing. Is- Cause you don't want to go 11th. If you're, if you're right. good enough oh, to no, go no. second, cause now you're right. giving up millions and millions of dollars. But could you say, Hey, you know what? Be very wise to make that trade, get what you can get. Cause I don't want to play for your team. Yeah. Where was Eli taken in that draft? Because that was the Philip Rivers Eli. Oh, four, right? Yeah. And I think it was a switcheroo, but I don't think those were the first two picks. I think. Well, Eli, Eli was. was the first. Eli was number one pick. Yeah. Eli that's right. That's one. right. Yeah. yeah. He was. E- Eli was. That's uh, what it was. They switched. Yep. So the Chargers had the one, and then the Giants that's what had the four. And okay, Philip R- Philip Rivers went fourth, technically, to the Giants, and then, and then, the, and then they okay. swapped. That's yeah. what I was thinking of. But then didn't the Chargers, the Chargers also had, what was that trade? Let's see here. Did they get Sean Marion in that mm-hmm. trade too? Like, it... No, I thought he was t- taken in the, uh, in the, uh, Mo- uh, in the Moss draft. I thought he was taken in the Troy Williamson draft. Okay. A couple years later. Oh. Yeah. Cause he, he was a Maryland guy and Tice actually, I think wanted him. Hmm. And then I got one more for you guys here. Dave Condry says, I live in central Illinois. All I hear is bears talking rumors. Thank God I found the Purple Daily YouTube channel I started watching a few months ago. So I'm fairly new to the channel. I can't remember exactly when I became a Vikings fan, but it was probably in the early 90s. That's when I became a fan. Mm -hmm. I know it's your job to recklessly speculate, but I would be so happy when the draft and all these rumors and speculations are behind us. They're all driving me insane. I guess to be a Vikings fan, you kind of have to be a little insane. So I guess I should feel right at home. Uh, Sports Dad, any advice to people who are burnt out on just the speculative nature of the last three months? 
Oh, it's almost over. Like you've come th- you've come this far. Stay stay for the remainder of the ride. Six more days. Yeah, it's six and more then days. It's, and, and then it's going to be about well, they've got their guy. Yeah. Now we get to watch him in the offseason. And yeah. But if you're a fan, this pick is very well going to define the next five to eight years at least. So like I, I guess I don't understand why you would burn out. This to me is the fun of it. Like it's a blast. Yeah. This team has never won a Super Bowl. This could set them up if it's done right to win a Super Bowl. So when that Lombardi is being hoisted, hoisted, yep. I tell you. Yep. Won't That's you thing, say, dude. you know what? I'm I'm thinking back to the draft of 2024 and what that meant. They went from having almost zero chance to win a Super Bowl the last few years. Like we all kind of bought in a little bit in that 13 and 3 season like, "Oh man, there's just something weird and magical happening." And then reality hit in the first round against the Giants. Right. But they went from having virtually no chance the way that they had set up their roster and quarterback and whatever to now it's not guaranteed and they could bust. They could draft someone. Doesn't work out. But at least now they're like on the tracks. They're on the path. Rookie scale contract. Build your team. And for all the worrying about, oh, what if they what if they draft another Christian Ponder or another T-Jack or somebody? What if they don't? What if they draft a Lamar Jackson? What if, and I get, you could say, well, but where's his Super Bowl? Okay, well, but he's a lot closer than the Vikings have been. What if they draft a Patrick Mahomes? Well, and I guess my question is, what's the burnout here? Like, this is the fun of it. They only play 17 meaningful <laughs> right. games. It's not like we have 162, so let's see some games. Like, to me, this is the fun of it. This whole thing, I mean, this league has perfected the art of roster construction unfolding in front of us. Yeah. And to your point, so there's 365 days in a year, and we we are a daily podcast here, too. So we do 365 days of podcasts, some, a lot of times multiple podcasts in a day. So on 365 minus 17 gets us to, what, 348? So on 348 days... There isn't a game to react to. <laughs> right. Uh, so like the NFL by nature is speculative. It's and they like you said, they've done a brilliant job of season ends in February. How can it be fascinating for 12 months? And here we sit. I mean, the season's been over for three months. And yet, at least to us, these are some of the most exciting shows because they're laying groundwork for the next eight to 10 years of Vikings football. When the season, the actual season, came to, to an end, I think my personal excitement ramped up tenfold. Yeah, me too. Because, like, by the end, yes. it's like they're slumping. This isn't that much fun to watch. And then it gets done, and you're like, okay, combine, free agency. Mm-hmm. So I, you, this is a ride. It's an amusement ride. And you get to be on the ride. You're not driving it, but okay. But still, the ups and downs, the roller coaster. Yeah, that's how I would paint it. There is a, by the way, there is a giant raging Kirk Cousins debate happening up and down the I, YouTube I, you comment know section what? right now. That's our fault. We did bring <laughs> him hilarious. up, and that's our fault. And I am like, you talk about PTSD. Some of the stuff, it's like, no, never again. I don't want to have to worry about that. We only talked about him as a player for the most part. I think. Yeah. So, all right, that is a wrap on this feedback Friday. Here, we'll hit you with a Saturday checkdown episode. Declan's got vent line, and next week. We count the days until Thursday night, round one. The shaping of the future of this franchise will be streaming live from the Fillmore in Minneapolis, live on the Purple Daily YouTube channel starting just before 7 o'clock Central Time. So whether you're in the Fillmore or whether you're at home, and we're going to be keeping you abreast of all the news that night too. Like we're going to be on every pick. So it can be your only screen if you want. We will guide you through the entire night on Thursday here. Purple Daily, where we just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. It's not about the dollars, but it is about what the dollars represent.